Today I'm going to show you how I've made my own custom laptop sticker. Ever since I had my MacBook it has been clean. I haven't put any stickers on it and I think it looks a bit boring. There are a bunch of cool stickers available that you can buy off the shelf. But I didn't want any of the cliché Apple parodies like the Snow White for example or the Superman or the apple juice box. Although some of them are really nice like the man with the apple on his face, which is a parody of the painting Le Fils de l'Homme by the Belgian surrealist painter René Magritte, I really wanted to make my own sticker that covered up the apple while still using the light it emitted. I googled a bunch of limo sceneries until I found this one on DeviantArt that was made by Nullig. She made this really nice vector drawing. Be sure to check her work out, she has a lot of really cool drawings most of them are Disney and DreamWork themed ones. You can find a link to her work in the description. I saved this image to my desktop and I did the same for the Apple logo. Once I have downloaded these two images, I can import them into Inkscape. First of all, I'll lock their aspect ratios to make sure that these don't change while I'm resizing them. And I'll give them roughly the same size for now. Next up, we'll need to convert these images into vector drawings. What I have here is a raster image, which means that it consists solely out of pixels. And when I zoom in a lot on this image, you can see these different pixels. But the vinyl cutter doesn't really know what to do with it. It needs the vector lines in order to follow those with the blades and cut them out. We can create a vector based on our image by selecting it, going to Path and then selecting Trace Bitmap. When we now turn on the live preview, we are able to see what the computer thinks this image looks like. We can play around a little bit with the brightness cutoff setting. The threshold value can be set anywhere between 0 and 1. And when it's set to 0, every pixel will be imported as white. When it's set to 1, every pixel will be imported as black. But since this is just a black and white image, a value around 0.5 gives the best result. Just click OK now and a vector will be created and put on top of the reference image. You are now able to select and move this vector. You can also change the way it looks. We can change its color for example, or as we'll do for now, turn off the fill color and just show the stroke lines. This way we can easily see which lines will be cut by the vinyl cutter. When we now double click our shape, all the edit points of our curse will display. And we can start cleaning up our drawing by deleting the ones we don't need and adding some additional ones where we do. My original plan was to keep some of the scenery, but as I started removing uh, all the stuff around it, I thought it looked better if I just kept the character itself. Whenever our shape is as desired, we just have to make sure that it has the correct dimensions to cover up the Apple logo as good as possible. I've measured the height of the Apple logo on my laptop and it's 48 mm tall. So I can just select the Apple logo and enter the correct height value at the top. And now I know that the size of my Limbo character will be the same in reality as the proportion on my screen. So now I can start scaling the Limbo guy. I'll try to do this in a way that his head covers up the entire Apple logo. This way only its eyes will light up. I also decided to mirror the image and this way, the shape of the apple and the head of the Limbo character fitted together better. I've put the apple and the character in two different layers, so I can turn them on and off separately. And all that's left to do now is to export the design as a PDF in order to make sure that it will import without a problem in the vinyl cutter software. The vinyl cutting software isn't all that special. It will simply cut all the lines in your design regardless of their color, width or layer. So be sure to export only what you need in this case just the Limbo character and not the Apple. The color of the sticker is only determined by the color of the vinyl foil you put on the machine. In this case it's black. You can now put the roll on the cutter and load it into the machine. And then start it up. And once it has finished its startup routine, we can set an origin or starting point from which the machine will start cutting our sticker. There are a bunch of settings you can change but in the end there are only two important ones. The speed and the pressure that the vinyl cutter will apply to the blade. The default setting for the speed is rather high, so I slowed it down a little bit. Same goes for the pressure. Since we are using rather thin foil, I also lowered it a bit, 
to make sure that it would only cut through the sticker and not the entire sheet. We only have to start the cutting job now and the rest is handled by the machine. As the machine is cutting our design, you can't really see a lot happening. It's not until you remove the excess foil afterwards that the final design will appear. Once the vinyl cutter has finished his job, I can use a pair of scissors to cut off the foil. Now this is the moment where the magic happens. As we can see our design come to life as we remove the excess foil. Just be careful that you only remove the pieces you don't need anymore. If you do this too hasty, you might stick pieces of the excess foil to pieces of the design you still need later on. Now we still have to remove the small cutouts for the eyes. I use a bit of excess foil in order to make it easier to remove these excess pieces. In some cases, using a pair of scissors or a knife might be an easier option. Again, don't try rushing this step, because it's easy to mess up your sticker if you're not careful enough. Now this is what the stickers look like. I've cut them three times, and I've also cut them into separate stickers, which will make it easier to apply them. Now I can position my sticker in the exact place where I want it, making sure it perfectly covers up the apple. Then I can get some painter's tape to keep it in place. I've also made sure that my laptop was clean before I applied the sticker, so that it will adhere properly to the laptop. And then I can start by carefully peeling off the sticker. It's easier to apply the sticker by peeling it away while it's fixed in the exact location, instead of removing the entire sticker at once and trying to apply it in the correct place. And this is what the end result looks like. It turned out exactly as I wanted it, because there's no sign of the Apple logo anymore. And I also think that the look that you get is a perfect match with the uncomfortably creepy atmosphere you experience in the video game.